We've come to Pembrokeshire to do a bit of climbing on the limestone sea cliffs here. And it's a really amazing place to climb. I first started climbing here during my PhD. We used to come over here four or five times a year. So it's got a real, real sense of history of my climbing here. And it's also a really great place to look at the ecology of sea cliffs. And particularly, we want to look at what we call an environmental gradient. As conditions change as you move up the cliff, the species that are there and the adaptations that they have to the environment, they change as well. You can actually climb through all of these different zones and take a journey through this process and actually see it as you're moving through. Most of the routes in Pembroke start here in the intertidal. This is a properly marine environment. Everything that lives here is, is truly adapted to being submerged in seawater twice a day. So it's a really tough environment because you're getting soaked in water and then you're getting exposed to sunlight and then you're getting soaked again. So it's really dynamic, but it's super rich in diversity. All kinds of organisms from these barnacles and limpets to algae and anemones in the rock pools and even lichens are here as well. This, this black seaweedy looking thing is in fact a fungus called Lycaena pygmaea. It's actually one of the things that I work on, trying to understand how it's evolved to surviving in this environment. This intertidal zone, I think it's such a really special place to be because it gives you a perspective on, on a way of living that's totally, totally alien to us really and we're just given this window into it every low tide to see what the underwater environment looks like. It's, uh, yeah, it's really special. I've just taken a couple of steps up. There's a really nice bit of symmetry here because in these rocks you can see fossils because this rock itself was a, was a marine environment once. This was the, this was the seabed of a tropical sea. And so you can still see the remnants of the sea creatures here, fossilized in the rock, which I think is really cool, mirroring the fact that we're still in a marine environment today. As you move further up the cliff, things start to change. And it's a bit blank here, there's not a lot, but there are still things alive here. And if you look in this crack, you can see this sort of black, crusty stuff. That's another lichen called Verucaria mora. And this is, this is a lichen that grows in, in the supralittoral zone, which is the part of the shore that's above the intertidal. It's an interesting one for climbers as well. Sometimes it covers the entire sheet of rock and it can get pretty slippy underfoot. Just a few moves further up the cliff and the community starts to change again and now we're starting to see these these orange lichens come in. These are a genus of lichens called Caloplaca and that orange colour is is really important for them because it acts as a as a sunscreen pigment. This is the most the most exposed part of the shore and even though they're not getting as beaten by the sea they're certainly getting beaten by UV and so these lichens they produce this this orange pigment which helps protect the algae inside them and allows them to photosynthesize in in pretty tough light conditions and you can see how there's a really sharp delimitation of where these where these lichens come in you know you're walking up bare rock and then suddenly bang orange things everywhere right it's a really sharp transition But when you top out, you're greeted by this smell, amazing smell of this uh, golden samphire. And even the plants here are adapted to surviving in, the, in this salty environment. And the leaves are super waxy and really thick. And this is another adaptation that allows them to withstand this really salty sea air. And there's a whole bunch of organisms like this that 
fill this little niche of, of living on sea cliffs, just holding on where, where other things can't. I think it's a really nice symmetry to climbing as well, I think, you know. They're still holding on and trying to survive up here. <laughs> To describe climbing in Pembrokeshire, obviously it's all sea cliffs uh, and some of the cliffs are pretty big. So it can feel quite an imposing place to climb. Sea cliff climb is kind of the wrong way around really because you start at the top and the first thing you do at the start of the morning is chuck yourself off a massive abseil. So it can feel quite, um, it can feel quite twitchy. If you need to escape for any reason, you're escaping upwards rather than using gravity on your side to escape downwards and walk away. I think as a climber you can't help but take a, a, quite a keen interest in geology. In all the definitive guidebooks, most of them have, will have geolo geological notes explaining how the rocks that we, we climb on in certain areas were formed. And yeah, I am a bit of a geek, but I do enjoy reading those, those parts of the guidebooks. So in, in this sort of process of tying climbing and my science together, I've kind of started to feel that there's, there's so much room for, for interaction between those two right? and how natural history and, and climbing and running, how they can actually really intermesh with each other quite a lot. When you've kind of got an idea of what it is that you're looking for or you've read something in a book and then you find it for the first time, like, it can be super exciting. You get a real buzz from it. 